hello, good morning and welcome to Camilla and I. I'm Mark Cooper and here we do honest reviews of equipment that we actually use. And today is a rare occasion when we've actually purchased an item almost straight away for our wildlife photography. And that is the Sigma 500mm f5.6 lens. Well in this review I'll give you my conclusions first so you don't have to waste any time if you're not interested in this lens but it's well worth watching the whole review because there are compelling reasons to purchase this lens for your wildlife photography and also if you watch on you'll see how we captured one of the UK's rarest little birds. So diving straight in, this is a professional lens, well built in a very hard plastic coating, very durable, hand holdable with five stops of image stabilization. This lens is extremely sharp, wide open at f5.6. The image quality is superior to almost any zoom on the market. With this combination, you get professional photos in a very small package. And the autofocus is lightning fast, almost as fast as the 600mm f4 dedicated Sony lens. But ultimately, it's handling where this lens really scores. It's the ability to get this into position where a 600 millimeter three kilogram lens, you just wouldn't physically be able to get it into position. So this is the ultimate stealth wildlife photography lens, in my opinion. 10 times magnification, ultimate quality, amazing. So there we are, that's it. Now, if you watch on, you'll see why we've come to this conclusion. This lens costs twice the price of a zoom equivalent lens, but it does feature an aperture f5.6 to f32, and it is available on the collar. There's a locking button which you unlock, and then you've got access to aperture settings on the barrel which is very useful for video. To lock, you must put it back in A. It has a 95 millimeter filter, which we have purchased for this lens. It's dust and water resistant. We've got a 90 degree rotating foot with an Arca Swiss mount. There's also a click on and off for the aperture settings, so you can click through them but uh, we have that set off for video. We have an autofocus manual focus button. We have a limiter button which goes from 3.2 to 10 meters and 10 meters to infinity and a full setting. And also we have an optical steady shot setting which I've now worked out. We need to set to one for erratic subjects and number two for panning. So uh, anyway, we leave it on optical steady shot number one and uh, also it's got customizable functions which uh, we don't know how to use yet so I uh, don't think I've had a customizable lens before anyway I'm sure we'll uh, find some use for that in the future and uh, also three focus hold or programmable buttons on the lens itself the lens is made in Japan which um, well quality assured I suppose um, always reassuring when it's made in the country of origin. It's so lightweight compared to other lenses. This one weighs in at 1370 grams. It's got a really good quality lens hood, which um, often they just come with these sort of like snap on clip type things. But this one has got a really good lockable lock down, screw down lock which you expect on a professional lens so there's really no chance of this lens hood coming off in the field which is very useful. 
So in this lens we've got 20 elements as well. It's an 11 blade aperture, so it gives very good bokeh. And there are three extra dispersion elements and another two coated elements as well, which go to make this uh, lens quality superb. Anyway, you get the idea. This is a professional lens, twice the price of a zoom lens, which is more flexible, but superb quality. Also, me and Sony have made third-party lenses only work at half the frame rate as normal. So with the Sony A1 attached here, normally we get 30 frames per second in high burst mode, but with this lens we can only get 15 frames per second. So this could be a deal breaker for a sports photographer, but for wildlife photography 15 frames per second is still pretty good. We used to marvel at getting 10 or 12 frames per second, so 15 is still pretty good. Anyway, enough waffling on in the studio. Let's get out in the real world and show you how we use this lens. And here we are in the Woodford Valley, Salisbury, about three miles from my home. Anyway, let's see what we've got. We've got uh, minimum aperture f5.6, autofocus, full setting, optical steady shot 2, customization off because we haven't got a clue what we're doing with this lens yet and uh, we're set to uh, 1 1/1500th of a second wide open at f5.6 uh, all ready to shoot well certainly the ability to uh, run and gun with this particular combination is quite incredible already got close to a couple of subjects normally very skittish very wary of man as we shoot them introduced to this country, the red-legged partridge, um, a very skittish bird. Anyway, using the stealth capabilities of this lens, with me. I was just able to go up here, nip up here, just uh, slightly uh, trespass on this uh, farmer's land, as I noticed a couple of red-legged partridge on the uh, fallowed field here. So I was able to get a couple of shots of these red leg partridge, which I normally wouldn't have been able to get because uh, probably would have been fumbling around with the three kilogram lens. And it's difficult just holding the lens in position. It's one thing having a 600 millimeter, I say it's the other thing getting it into position. And uh, this is where a run and gun situation, you get shots you otherwise wouldn't get. Oh, I've just spotted a yellow hammer up here. So, uh, yeah, Let's see if I can get this yellow hammer a minute as well. Yeah, quite nice. A little bit of bread, no cheese. Um, anyway, this is the sort of situation you get a little bit, uh, you're able to uh, sneak up a little bit more on your subject. I mean, yellow hammers are extremely skittish as it goes already. You can uh, sneak up on your subjects much better using a smaller lens and uh, yeah it's so lightweight. This setup, what have we got about 750 grams in the camera. Um, it's about two kilo combination altogether, about four and a half pounds something like that this combination and uh, it's that ability to sneak up on subjects. Obviously I'd be far more stealthy than this in the real world, but just for the demonstration, just sneaking up on a couple of hairs now. I usually off like a shot first thing in the morning. But yeah, it's that ability to get shots you otherwise wouldn't get with a lightweight combination. Or corn bunting. Yeah, corn bunting, I think. So the ability just to get the shot can't be emphasised enough because uh, obviously in this situation you could be sticking the 600mm out of the window. 
But uh, the agility and flexibility in this lens really pays off. Anyway, we'll go on to uh, Langford Lakes now and uh, have a little walk around there, see what we can get. Okay, catch you in a minute, guys. Well, here we are at uh, Langford Lakes, and uh, yeah, one of our local local accessible nature reserves and uh, even more accessible with the 500 millimeter sigma lens around this time of year the um, seti warbler just starts coming into, into play and uh, i believe we've captured one using this combination and, um, at no. this time of year there's still not a, there's not much leaf coverage so we're okay to get in on the warbler. I mean they still flit around a lot of twigs and uh, they're a really annoying bird but very difficult to photograph and um, you have to get very lucky for one thing even to see one. Staying really still and waiting for the bird to come to us. So I've got a little bit of video and um, a couple of stills so hopefully we'll see the quality in this particular lens and uh, f5.6 is fine in this particular light we've got a very good sunlit uh, background at the moment and indeed i did own the nikon 500 millimeter pf lens f5.6 with the uh, nikon d850 and this too was a superb combination and uh, that was reasonably lightweight as well not as lightweight as this, I don't think. I must uh, must look up the specs on that, compare the two. But um, <clears throat> I was surprised, actually, when I look back in my records, how many keepers I actually got with the 500 PF. When you look at your chart on Lightroom, if you go to camera settings, you can look at a particular lens you've used in the past. And I was surprised, out of the 80,000 photos I keep on my computer, 8,000 of them were taken with the Nikon 500PF. So, uh, yeah, so that's partly why we went for this lens as well. It's still short 100 millimeters in my, my view. If it was a uh, 600 f5.6, it would be even better, but obviously it'd be even longer and even bigger. So uh, it's a fairly good comp compromise f5.6 500 millimeter um, and I wouldn't use it with teleconverters even if they were available on the Sony system I don't think not with the Sony a1 anyway with the 50 megapixels and uh, able to crop anyway great test for it this morning I'll see what else I get anything else I'll put it at the end of this video but we are going to lose the light soon so uh, yeah, we won't be hanging around too long here at Lanford Lakes. But it's incredible. The ability to get in on the subject is superb. The autofocus as well, it really tests the capabilities out of the autofocus and indeed the stabilisation because it's all handheld. The video, etc. is all handheld. So, uh, yeah, at the moment, first impressions are looking really good on this lens absolutely superb so as you can see i obtained some of the best footage and stills to date of the setis warbler a rare and elusive bird in this country only visible at this time of year an amazing little creature and uh, obviously at this time of year it pops its head up with plenty of vocal singing for a mate and uh, that's why we were able to get it it was local knowledge and um, obviously some degree of skill to get in on the subject but this lens was absolutely crucial to obtaining the photos so in conclusion this lens is not for everyone this is a professional lens and it's for professional use but it's a great one to have in your arsenal 
It's one thing to have the best combination available. It's another thing to get it into position. However, it is still 100 millimeters short in my view. Obviously, it wouldn't be this size if it was the 600 millimeter f5.6. And you only get 15 frames per second with this, not the 30 with my Sony A1. Also, you only get f5.6, not f4. So you don't get that really good shallow depth of field. Although f5.6 is very good. It's not a pseudo macro lens as well. You can't really use it to magnify small subjects from a distance. You won't get that sort of postcard size image with this lens. It still weighs 1370 grams. So there is still weight in this combination. And indeed, I think it's well worth trying. Remember, Castle Cameras, your local accessible photography store. And we try and keep the independence going here on Camilla and I. Try this lens before you buy. There's no way you want to just check it's the right weight for you and that it's possible for you to hand hold all day long because it's still a significant chunk of glass. Anyway, let me know in the comments below if you've got uh, any questions about this lens. I will be doing a shootout with this lens. Um, we're going up against Jonathan who has the Sony A93 and the 300mm f2.8 with teleconverters to compete against this lens. So that should be an interesting shootout. So don't forget to uh, subscribe and hit the bell notification for uh, that shoot off to be arranged, but uh, one not to miss. Whether Sigma will produce this in Nikon and Canon mounts, I don't know because uh, Canon and Nikon have their own equivalent lenses. So anyway, thanks for watching a review from Camilla and I. And um, yeah, hope to see you out in the field with this lens. Absolutely incredible. Any other photos, sample photos, I'll put it at the end of this video as well. And don't forget to uh, help the channel. Please like, subscribe and share this video. Have a good one. Bye. From Camilla, the new lens and I.